So most of you who've been watching this channel for a while know that I have been a nutritional expert in hormones and maybe you don't know that the reason I am such is that I have my own hormone issues. I've been tracking my left breast for breast cancer for about 10 years. I've always had suspicious shadows in there, but nothing that was coming out clearly on imaging. And this year I learned that I have had invasive lobular carcinoma and I've had two surgeries for that and DCIS. So I've had a mastectomy surgery in the last couple of months and then a revisional surgery to get my DCIS margins. And I told on my other channel that I'm talking more about this, my personal journey through breast cancer diagnosis. I told viewers that I would be sharing on this channel, which is my more professional channel, a recipe for a salve to really soothe and heal scars after surgery. So this video today is just for anyone that's dealing with skin scars or wounds and incisions after surgery and the herbs and herbal oils and essential oils that you can use to heal them more quickly and in a little bit more soothing fashion than the kind of store-bought chemical-based synthetic creams and salves that you might find out there. My doctor said that I should wait two weeks after surgery before putting anything topical on my incision. And it's been about a week and five days now, so I have two more days to wait before I do anything topical. And so I wanted to make this salve here with you and show you how to do it. Um, my first experience with herbal oils and essential oils and tinctures was I worked at a, an herbal company called Eclectic Institute when I was in my late teens. And they don't carry it anymore, but they had an amazing skin healing salve that everyone just raved about, including myself, that was called CCC Cream. It was Calendula Comfrey and Coneflower Cream. And so two of those ingredients are gonna be included in my salve recipe today. And I'm really excited to make this video because I couldn't find anything on YouTube or the internet about um, specifically scar healing in the process after surgery. So just wanted to share a quick little DIY video tutorial with you today. So I'm starting out with my little teapot that I've shown in other videos. I like to use this on my spa days. And this is some boiling water that is still steaming. And I'm just gonna use this to make a little bath for the crock that I'm going to be using to put this salve into. So this is a crock that I got, a little glass, amber glass crock from Mountain Rose Herbs, and I'll put a link below to where I got it. And I'm just going to start by, I'll leave the lid on so that I don't get any water into the crock for now, but I'm just going to start by heating this up, slowly running the water over the glass. And I'm just going to place this in about an inch of water. So the water is nowhere near the top of the crock at this point. It is just about halfway up the crock. And then I'm going to take the lid off. It's a plastic lid. I'm going to put that aside. And the first ingredient I'm going to drop into my little crock is cacao butter. And this is organic cacao butter from Navitas brand. It's pure cacao butter, so it's the part of chocolate that does not involve the dark pigment. It smells a lot like chocolate. If you smell it, it smells exactly like a chocolate bar, actually. So it's just, it doesn't have the cacao, um, the brown cacao uh, coloring in it, pigment in it, but it does have all the fat properties. So this is going to be what makes the salve hard. And also, because I don't want to make a cream today, because creams have water in them and they tend to mold unless you use preservatives. So I want to use something that will allow the salve to last a long time, which means no water and no preservatives. So it's going to be a somewhat hard salve, um, and this is good for in the summertime especially because a lot of things will melt in the summer. If you just use oils or coconut oil, it will melt and become a liquid form. So this will help it to stay more solid in hot days and summer days if you're in the summertime watching this. And it will also make it a little less messy to apply, so it's not going to drip when you apply it. So I'm going to drop this in, and I'm going to try to find a couple smaller pieces. So a couple smallish pieces and or little bits of powder 
I'm just going to drop in and let that get warmed up. And I use these popsicle sticks to stir with, but you can also use those little skinny tea stirring sticks if that's what you have. Um, and I don't have a good source to, to lead you to um, stir sticks, so um, just anything. You can use a knife or a spoon as well, but I find that these disposable wooden sticks are a little bit easier to work with. So I'm just breaking up the cacao butter in the bottom of my crock. And I'm going to add my next ingredient, and I'm not going to be measuring these ingredients very exactly, but I will give you a recipe down below. So this is Nutiva brand organic coconut oil that is liquid, liquefied coconut oil. It is not solid. You can also use solid coconut oil if you'd like. I also use jojoba oil a lot with these recipes. They're very interchangeable. The reason I'm using coconut and not jojoba today is this has got a little bit more of an antibacterial quality than jojoba oil does. So this is going to be the bulk of the ingredient here in the salve and I would say it's just going to be about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half. And that will warm up slowly as well and will allow the cacao butter to melt into it don't need any kind of emulsifier because these are both fat based kind of ingredients. The cacao butter is a solid fat base and the coconut oil is a liquid fat base. So while that's warming up and getting ready to blend, I'm going to talk to you about the other ingredients. You want to be really careful, especially with comfrey. Um, comfrey is what we know of as an herb that kind of pulls up minerals and also toxins from the earth around it. So it's kind of a mining um, plant. It can mine for good things and it can mine for bad things. And when you harvest the plant, all the good things or the bad things are found inside the plant material. And so this is comfrey oil. It's not essential oil. Essential oil would be concentrated hundreds and hundreds of times more than the actual plant material itself. This is oil that has been steeped, or the plant material has been steeped in the oil. So it's much less strong than essential oil would be. So this is also organic, which means that it has not been mining any negative and harmful things, such as heavy metals. So we don't want any heavy metals in this sap. So this is organic comfrey oil from Mountain Rose Herbs. The other essential ingredient that I have to have in this salve because of my history with the CCC cream from Eclectic Institute is calendula. And this is an essential oil, but it is also an organic essential oil. It is a blend of lavender essential oil and calendula essential oil because calendula properties are activated by the lavender. So when they're acting together in a blend, the calendula is realized, um, the properties of the calendula plant are realized more potently along with lavender, which acts as a kind of potentiator. So here is my calendula oil. It is not from Mountain Rose Herbs. One thing that I did not get from Mountain Rose Herbs because they don't carry calendula oil. This is from Living Libations, a Canadian company. If you're going to order this, I'll give you a link to order it, but just make sure and plan a few weeks in advance before, like maybe right before your surgery, because this takes a while to come in the mail if you live in the U.S. If you live in Canada, especially in, I think, eastern Canada, where it's from, it'll probably come a lot quick, more quickly to you. Another essential ingredient is frankincense, kind of known as the serum of youth. Um, always good for any skin-based blend. It's going to be antibacterial and very, very soothing. And then finally, that's essential oil, by the way. Um, it's a organic frankincense, certified organic frankincense essential oil. And then finally, helichrysum essential oil. This is from Mountain Rose Herbs, and you'll see that it is a smaller than usual amount. That's because helichrysum is very expensive, so I only buy one little tiny vial of it every couple of years. Um, I save money that way, and it's fresher when I get it next time. So I'm going to be using the entire remainder of this bottle, which there's about, I guess, a third or a quarter of a bottle left. And originally it was 3.6 milliliters, so it'll be about a milliliter that I will use in this blend. 
and um, I'll let you know in the recipe below how many drops of the other oils I'm going to use. So I'm just looking to see if my cacao butter is melting. All the smaller pieces are pretty much melted. The big piece is still working on melting. But first we're gonna add the comfrey herbal oil. I'm gonna add more of this because it, again, it is not as strong of a strength. It is just an oil with plant material steeped in it for a number of weeks or months. And so we're gonna add almost a whole teaspoon of this to our blend. Oh, and I should tell you what kind of oil is the base for this. I can't remember. Oh, it's olive oil. Yeah, and it's got a little bit of vitamin E oil as a preservative, but it is based in olive oil and no other oil. Next, I'm gonna do the calendula and lavender blend. I'm gonna do about 12 drops of that. And if you get this on your fingers like I just did, your fingers will turn an orangey amber color. This is a, a very colorful mixture because the calendula has a lot of color in it. It's also known as a marigold in um, common gardening terms. Next is the frankincense. And just like any other skin blend, I always put at least 10 drops of frankincense in any skin oil or salve. And that one was more like 15. Anywhere between 10 and 15 is great. And finally the helichrysum. Like I said, I'm just gonna dump the rest of this little vial in here and let it drip so that I'm sure to get every last drop. Helichrysum is not the most pleasant smelling oil until you get used to it. Um, it's also known as the curry plant and it has a very distinctive curry-like smell. Um, I like it now that I'm used to it, but it definitely has a strange, almost kind of like formaldehyde type smell, so it takes some getting used to. And because of the pigment of the calendula, you are going to see some color coming out in your salve, and so it'll be like a yellow or a light orange or amber color. I'll show you the stick. It almost looks kind of bluish. It's so dark when it first comes out, but it turns to this kind of orange amber color after it's mixed in with the lighter oils. Now, after adding all these ingredients, this little amber glass crock is almost full. It is up to just below the where the cap ends, so it is quite full. And so I have plenty of salve to last me the rest of a month or two of nightly application. I will put this on before bed and I will put some kind of a, a bandage probably over it. And then after the first couple of weeks, I will also use a silicone gel um, over it. So that'll keep the air from getting to it and um, keep it nice and moisturized underneath the silicone gel. It's not recommended that you use a silicone gel until a full month after your surgery though. So for the first couple of weeks, I will use just this salve. I will let it cool and solidify, and then I will use it on a nightly basis. Um, I'm gonna keep mixing it every 10, 10 minutes until it's solidified, um, just to make sure that all the constituents are fully blended at its final solidness in the solid state and again there's not so much calendula in here that it is going to be a dark orange color you can see it's more of a yellow color on the stick um, again I will apply it in its solid form with a popsicle stick or a stir stick like this and if I don't have a stir stick then I will just make sure my hands are very clean and I'll use the front part of my fingernail to scrape off. Just a small amount, enough to cover the whole incision um, without leaving too much greasiness left behind. And, um, and then I'll be sure and wash my hands after because there is a little bit of greasiness that happens to stay on the hands. Or if you have another scar someplace on your body, like I have one from childhood here on my wrist, I might just rub the excess oiliness onto that scar or another place in your body that is in need of some healing or soothing after some irritation or scratch or injury. 
So that's my recipe for herbal salve for your scars or incisions after surgery. I hope this is helpful to you and um, in future videos I might share some of the other concoctions I've been using. This is my turmeric oil. Um, I did not put cacao butter in this because I only used it for a week after each surgery. So this has been something I don't put right on the incision but around the incision for pain. Uh, if you're interested in that recipe let me know and I'll make a video on that. Yeah, this is my Manuka honey concoction, which I'm really proud of because Manuka honey is really hard to um, blend with anything. It's not fat soluble, so it doesn't mix with essential oils or even carrier oils like jojoba or coconut. And so it kind of remains separate. And so I'm very proud that I was able to mix a little bit of apple cider vinegar and a little bit of gelatin to make a more solid and gel-like salve out of my Manuka honey and that was for just the first few days after I took the bandages off after a week. Um, I did put some of this just to keep um, an antibacterial environment in the bandage. So I didn't put it right on the wound or right on my incision but I put it on the bandage and then put the bandage on my incision. So that's also really healing and um, just super super antibacterial and antifungal in nature. Manuka honey is such an amazing healer for skin, uh, wounds especially. So those are some of the other topical things that I've been using up until now. Let me know if you're interested in more information of any of those. Um, I can share with you the source of my CBD. It is a high quality and therefore very expensive CBD product and I can let you know how to order it direct from the manufacturer. It is made in California, of, of course, as many CBD pr products are made. Anyway, I will see you in my next video. I can't promise when it'll be because I'm dealing with all of this post-surgical stuff, but hopefully within the next month I'll have another video for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.